agate, chert, chalcedony, and jasper, each of these minerals have seemingly endless varieties from many different localities all over the world. Some are highly, highly desired, and some less so. But they all have one very specific thing in common. They are all forms of silicon dioxide, basically quartz. However, the lines between them can be confusing to beginners and veterans of the hobby alike. Today, we're going to distill these differences down and make them a little bit easier to understand. Stay tuned. Before we get into this, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel, and if you want to take that extra step further, you can find more ways to help in the description. Huge shout out to my Patreon and Mineral of the Month Club subscribers. I'll be answering one of your questions at the end of this video. Let's begin. Agates, Cherts, Chalcedonies, and Jaspers all are varieties of quartz, and all are confused for each other often. In order to make it all make sense, we'll begin our study with chalcedony. And you'll see why pretty quickly. There are two main definitions for chalcedony. Depending on the context, it can have a very different meaning. First, it's a general term for, quote, all varieties of quartz that are comprised of microscopic or sub-microscopic crystals. So more generally, somebody might refer to agate, chert, jasper, chrysoprase, petersite, and more as varieties of chalcedony. It's a more classic definition that is still widely used. Second, and in a much more strict sense, chalcedony has a designation in scientific literature as its own mineral. Chalcedony is designated as, quote, aggregates of parallelly grown, fibrous, microscopic, or submicroscopic quartz crystals, end quote. Looking at these specimens under a microscope, mineralogists have determined that there are at least two specific types of this fibrous microcrystalline quartz. Length fast chalcedony and length slow chalcedony. In the length fast, the crystallites, this is the term used for microscopic crystal forms, are stacked perpendicular to the C-axis as seen in this image. The length slow, which are designated as quartzine, are stacked parallel. This image definitely helps. Now, both the length fast and length slow tend to develop radially grown fibers that result in botryoidal or grape-like masses, rounded nodules, or even stalactitic habits. They can be found intergrown together even. Keep in mind though, it's not possible to distinguish the two types typically with the naked eye. Both can often show concentric banding perpendicular to the fiber orientation, and when this happens, they are called our next mineral, agate. Agates are a distinctly banded fibrous form of chalcedony. The name is derived from its occurrence in the Achates River in southwestern Sicily. The banding that you see in an agate is due to periodic changes in translucency. The darker the banding appears, the more translucent it is. That may seem counterintuitive, but this visual effect can be reversed when backlighting a specimen. The contrast in layers can also be amplified by other mineral inclusions or color changes. Now, apparently very old agates can become almost opaque after being subjected to the rigors of time, chemical alteration and weathering and the like. Agates are specifically a length fast chalcedony. These translucency changes are caused by periodic changes in the size of the crystallites that make up the agate. You may have heard of iris agate before, thin slices of agate that have an absolutely wild optical property. This is caused specifically by the fact that in those specimens, you can see the length fast fibers in transmitted light basically with the naked eye, and you get absolutely wild effects. There are two types of banding that occur in agates as well, wall lining banding and horizontal banding, and it's exactly what it sounds like. In the first, the fibers grow from the walls to the interior, and that causes the banding to be parallel to the walls. Horizontal banding is much more rare and usually accompanied by wall banding. Also, due to how the fibers form, there are usually tiny gaps between the crystals which allow agates to be ever so slightly porous. Which is one of the key factors as to why you can dye an agate. So why are there so many types of agates? Due to environmental conditions as they form and the way they look being wildly different between localities. 
So there's an ever increasing amount of types on the market. This point goes for all of the minerals we'll be discussing. But finally, on the agate front, keep in mind that an agate is not just a banded chalcedony. There are banded chalcedonies that are not agates. So, agate is a variety of chalcedony that has a distinct banding and is fibrous that will have a varying degree of translucency due to the nature of said fibers. Unfortunately, a lot of the confusion between agate and chalcedony comes from chalcedony specimens that are not agates being marketed as agates. Fire agates, for instance, are cool, but not agate. Feather agates, also super cool, not agate. But more devastatingly to some of you, neither is grape agate. All of these fall into the chalcedony category and not agate because they do not meet the definitions for an agate. Next up we have chert. Where I live in the Missouri Ozarks, there is tons of chert. Anytime people bring in local rocks for me to identify, chances are the word will fly out of my mouth a lot especially considering that its growth habits create a lot of pseudo-fossils. Things that look like fossils, but really aren't. I had a man all excited at a truck bed of chert nodules recently telling me he'd found giant bones. He'd also apparently seen a rock monster in a cave and was going to go dig up an alien. That was a weird morning, but I digress. Cherts are compact, hard rocks comprised of microscopic quartz grains or fibrous chalcedony grains. Chert can form in a variety of geological settings. Some cherts form from the silicification of volcanic sediments. Some form as nodules in ancient marine sediments. Others form in layers of other sedimentary rocks. The main thing to know is that these are dense, hard, and fine-grained. They're granular. That's key. You don't have the fibrous nature of chalcedony. Unless you slice the chert very thin, it doesn't really have anything in the way of translucency. It's typically a very dull luster. Look at these chert specimens next to these agates. Now, cherts can sometimes have quartz, usually a druzy, or even sometimes minor agate form with them, and that's pretty fun. Finally, we have jaspers. Jasper's kind of interesting. It's the only term that we've discussed that is not considered an approved mineral species. <laughs> Not because it's not a mineral, but rather a term used with a couple of minerals. Historically used to describe one of two things, opaque, or mostly opaque, and impure chalcedony or chert. These are generally red, brown, maybe tan in color. Jaspers are very often associated with banded iron formations, and that makes sense. The colors we typify with jasper are usually due to abundant iron inclusions, with outliers of course. So let's wrap all of this up as best we can. Agates, jaspers, cherts, and chalcedony are all forms of silicon dioxide, colloquially called quartz. Some are specific forms of the others. Agates are a very specific variety of chalcedony. Jaspers can be either chert or chalcedony depending on the conditions. Chert is a hard, dense rock that can be made out of tiny grains of chalcedony or quartz crystal. They all have similarities and some are connected to each other. Now a very interesting phenomena, especially with certain types of chalcedony, is fluorescence, and a Patreon member named Building Dwarf, which is a great username, wants to know what makes a mineral fluorescent, or glow, under ultraviolet lighting, and what causes the specific colors. Fluorescence is a complex interplay of atoms, the things that make up everything. These fluorescent minerals have impurities in them, and we call them activators. These impurities, in conjunction with the base mineral, have an interesting reaction when exposed to various wavelengths of light. Light is energy. The reaction goes like this. Light hits the atom. The electrons on the atom reach an excited state and begin to, quote, get the zoomies, end quote. They speed up really quickly. And this gives off a visible light. Now, not every mineral element or impurity will do this. Only some, these activators specifically, are sensitive to this. When the ultraviolet light is removed, they slow back down to their normal state. Now, if these are activators, there are also things called quenchers. Inclusions that basically drown out any kind of fluorescence. For instance, calcite is a very common potentially fluorescent mineral. But if it has a lot of iron content, you will get very little or no fluorescence. 
As to what causes the specific colors of the glows, that comes down to the specific impurity and how it interacts with the mineral it's in. I hope this video has been beneficial to you. Thanks again to all of my Patreon and Mineral of the Month Club members. You make videos like this possible, and I appreciate you tremendously. If you haven't yet, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.